Anticoagulant drugs are drugs that slow down the clotting process. They are used to either prevent blood clots from forming or to treat them once they have formed. The most common oral anticoagulant drug used in the United Kingdom is warfarin and will be referred to during this DVD. Less commonly used drugs are phenindione and acinacumarol. There are a number of conditions requiring treatment with warfarin. The most common conditions are atrial fibrillation, a condition where the chambers of the heart do not contract at the same time, causing blood flow to stagnate. Atrial fibrillation increases the risk of stroke fivefold. Oral anticoagulation is prescribed to reduce this risk. It is also used in the prevention and treatment of deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. Warfarin is prescribed for mechanical heart valves to prevent clots from forming on the valve and causing a stroke. The length of treatment with anticoagulants depends upon diagnosis. It can range from a matter of months and in some cases for life. The person prescribing the warfarin will discuss this with you. There is no fixed dose of warfarin. The dose of warfarin needs to be adjusted for each patient. This depends upon the results of a blood test. The blood test measures the time it takes the blood to form a clot. It is called the International Normalised Ratio, or INR for short. A normal INR measures between 0.9 and 1.2. When warfarin is prescribed, the INR is prolonged. For most conditions, including atrial fibrillation, deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, the INR needs to be kept between 2 and 3. Usually, in patients at high risk of thrombosis, this will be increased to between 3 and 4. Initially, blood tests will be frequent. Frequency of testing depends upon the stability of the INR result. The person prescribing warfarin will discuss your target INR with you. The amount of warfarin prescribed can vary from time to time, as there are a number of factors that can affect the INR. To ensure safety, it is important to understand the factors that can alter the INR. This will help to keep the INR stable. It is also important that you are aware of the circumstances in which the INR will need to be more closely monitored. In the UK, the colours and strengths of warfarin are 0.5, which is a white tablet, 1 mg tablets are brown, 3 mg tablets are blue, and 5 mg tablets are pink. It is important that you are familiar with the different strengths of warfarin available. It is important that you do not confuse the dose in milligrams with the number of tablets that you take. If you miss a dose or take the wrong dose by mistake, take your usual dose the following day. However, if the dose taken in error greatly exceeds the prescribed dose, this should be reported to the person monitoring your INR. Tablets should be taken at the same time every day. It is recommended that patients take their tablets between 6 and 8 p.m. before their evening meal. If you travel abroad, this needs to be taken into consideration, especially if there is a time difference. If you forget to take your warfarin, it is safe to take it later in the evening. Never take a double dose unless advised to do so. Because of its action, the main risk of taking warfarin is bleeding. Signs of bleeding include unexplained or severe bruising, prolonged bleeding from small cuts, nosebleeds that are frequent and last for longer than 20 minutes, excessive bleeding from gums, blood in the urine, red or black stools, unusually heavy periods or bleeding in between periods, vomiting blood, bloodshot eyes and unusual headaches. These symptoms should be reported to the person monitoring your INR to arrange a blood test and for the cause of the bleeding to be investigated. If the bleeding is severe or not slowing down, it is important to seek medical advice immediately. Warfarin can cause side effects which are rare. Occasionally some patients experience nausea, diarrhoea, rash or hair loss. If any of these symptoms occur, they should be reported to the person monitoring your INR. Many medicines interact with warfarin to either increase or decrease the INR. You should inform the person monitoring your INR if you are prescribed new drugs or have stopped or changed the dose of previously prescribed drugs. This is important particularly if your next blood test is more than a week away. 
If you are prescribed antibiotics, in particular the antibiotics metronidazole, ciprofloxacin, erythromycin or rifampicin, a blood test should be arranged within a week. Aspirin or any preparations containing aspirin should be avoided unless they are prescribed by a cardiologist. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as Nurofen, Ibuprofen and Diclofenac should be avoided. This group of drugs increases the bleeding risk. If they are prescribed, the INR will need to be monitored closely. Some painkillers can affect the INR. Paracetamol is accepted. However, prolonged or regular use can cause the INR to rise. It is recommended that you take no more than five tablets of paracetamol in 24 hours. If pain control continues to be a problem, your GP will prescribe a codeine-based painkiller. Always check with a pharmacist before buying any over-the-counter preparations such as cough mixtures or flu remedies. Where possible, these should be avoided. Some herbal remedies and vitamins can also significantly alter the INR and should be avoided. In general, you are advised to maintain a consistent lifestyle, particularly in relation to diet and drinking habits. Dramatic changes in diet can have an effect on the INR. Vitamin K plays an important part in the production of clotting factors and is used to reverse the effects of warfarin. Foods rich in vitamin K, such as the dark green leafy vegetables, broccoli, cabbage, spinach and Brussels sprouts can counteract the effect of warfarin. It is known that if you have a consistent amount of vitamin K in your diet, the INR tends to be more stable. Therefore, these vegetables should not be cut out of your diet completely. They provide a natural balance in the clotting mechanism. It is recommended that three portions of dark green vegetables are eaten in the week. The main issue is to keep a consistent amount of these vegetables in your diet. Starving and binge eating and some weight loss diets will also significantly affect the INR. If you change your diet for longer than a week, it is advised that you have an INR check. Alcohol can significantly raise the INR. Again, the message is consistency. Too much alcohol or variations in your alcohol intake can make the INR unstable. It is safer to take one, but no more than two units a day on a regular basis, rather than to binge drink. A unit of alcohol is equivalent to a glass of wine, a pub measure of spirit, or half a pint of beer. Never omit your warfarin to increase your alcohol intake, as this will put yourself at serious risk of developing a blood clot or having a bleed. Prolonged bouts of diarrhoea and vomiting can affect the absorption of the drug, and your dose will need to be adjusted accordingly. Viral infections and fevers can also affect the INR and should be reported to the person monitoring you so that an INR can be checked. Exercises such as walking, swimming and jogging are fine. Contact sports or activities in which injuries are likely to occur should be avoided. Sustaining a blow to the head can put you at risk of a brain haemorrhage. Should this happen, you should seek medical advice as soon as possible, especially if you experience any numbness or tingling in the limbs or an excessive headache. If you require treatment from a dentist or a doctor other than your GP, it is important that they know in advance that you take warfarin. This will allow time for your INR to be made safe prior to treatment. If your warfarin has been stopped for any reason and the INR has not been checked, it is important that you arrange to have a blood test as soon as you can. You will be given a record of your recent INRs and the dose of warfarin that you are taking. You should carry this record with you and present it if you need medical treatment or if you are requesting a repeat prescription. You will also be given an alert card that you should complete and carry in your purse and wallet at all times. Precautions should be taken to avoid pregnancy while on warfarin as this can harm the foetus. If you are planning a pregnancy it is important to discuss this with a doctor to ensure that a safe method of anticoagulation can be considered prior to and during the pregnancy. If you become pregnant whilst you are taking warfarin, you should seek medical advice immediately.